Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. It's been quite some time since I created a video. The last video I created was back in January, so it was two months ago. Since that video, my family have been over from the UK because my sister came over and got married. So we just had a month of celebrations while my family was here. And now they've all gone back, it's now time to get back into the swing of things. So the first thing I had to do was produce a piece from some samples of resin that were sent to me from Counter Culture. And they sent me two lots of this resin um, from the US, which I am going to, which I've tested out on this piece behind me. So it took a little while to get in through customs. Um, Customs didn't like the fact that I had resin on there and so we, there was a bit of to and fro in to get this imported into Australia. But I'm going to go ahead and still test these products out because I, I get a lot of people asking me about alternatives to the resin that I usually use which is from U Resin here in Australia. So I thought I would try these out and give you my honest opinion on what I think of them and how you know what what was the differences and things like that so I'm not being sponsored for this video and I'm not getting any uh, paid uh, I'm not getting any fees or anything for this video and I'm going to give you my honest thoughts on this particular resin now along with the 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 two parts that they sent through here which is a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio they also sent me a sample <laughs> dear me they sent me a sample of the colours. So I've got a cobalt blue, which is the colour that I used at the back here, this like darkish blue colour. Uh, the aquamarine, which I used down the bottom of the piece. The sky blue I didn't use, but I am going to use that when I create the resin sculpture because I'm going to also test this resin on a, making one of my resin sculptures or resin bowls and this is the sand colour. My first thoughts was, I mean the colours were beautiful um, the only thing with them, because I use a lot of metallic pigments I found that I wasn't getting quite the depth in the ocean in the back here because with the metallic you get a lot of undulations and things happening under the resin with the way the light bounces backwards and forwards from the the, the metal particles in the pigment so but I think this this these will work really really well with resin bowls and things or anything that you want to put light through so it's quite translucent so it's, it is a really nice they are really nice colors I wasn't able to try the epoxy pigment and white because I couldn't get it out of the bottle so this wouldn't come out so I'm gonna have to take the lid off somehow and get at this to try this out so the white that I used for this piece was actually Lorez Angel White so and I'll, I'll explain more in the video you know how I got the lace in and everything like that so I've still to try that so I will try that out so that will be coming in the next video so without further ado let's get into the video now, as I mentioned before, this is a one-to-one -one ratio of resin, so you've got part A and part B. Now, first impressions, it's a nice, clear resin. It's quite thick, so it pours quite slow, so I had to squeeze the bottle to get the resin out of the bottle into the cup, so I had to use a little bit of pressure to get the resin into the cups. Now I find with thicker resins that they don't flow the same on the board and I ended up having to mix up a bit more resin than I would with my normal resin because the viscosity is uh, not quite as runny so so this is something you need to bear in mind when you're measuring your resin out bear in mind if it's a little bit on the thicker side you will need a bit more resin because it won't flow and level quite the same. Now I don't normally show me pouring 
the resin or mixing the resin but in this case because it's a brand new resin that I've not used before I thought I would share my thoughts as I was mixing and measuring the resins the resin I should say out So I just mix these in a measuring, a plastic measuring jug and using wooden stirrers. I do reuse the stirrers and the cups. I will let the resin cure on the stirrers and um, they're then good to go the next time. I'll just trim any excess off around the edge of the stirrer once it's cured. When mixing the resin I did find that it did create a few bubbles but as the weather is quite warm still here in Australia I think it was 35 degrees the day that I was doing this the bubbles did dissipate quite quickly however I will use my heat gun when I'm using the resin on the boards so as you can see there's a few bubbles there but it wasn't too bad. So now I'm, I wasn't sure how much I needed to mix in with the resin each of the colours so I just added a small amount making sure that the amount that I was using was less, way less than 10%. I can always add more if I feel it needed some more to give it a denser colour. And like I said I only mixed the sand, aquamarine and cobalt for this particular piece. I could have used the sky blue if I'd wanted to use, um, have it a little bit lighter near the sand but I really like the aquamarine as it is next to the sand I thought it was a good contrast. So here I'm just getting all the colours ready to go before applying it to the board. I found that when I was mixing here as well that there wasn't lots and lots of bubbles so I would imagine in the winter there would be a fair few more bubbles um, just purely and simply because when it's cold you do get it's, it's a little bit harder for the bubbles to mix. I also would imagine that in winter this resin would be a lot thicker as well because I find that my own uh, brand of resin that I use is normally a bit runnier in the summer months. So that would be a bit of a concern for me in the cooler months if I was using this particular resin. Now normally when I'm doing my ocean scenes I would normally use real sand in with resin and that would give the colour. My only criticism of the colour of this sand is for sand colour I should say is that it's a bit darker than the colour of sand that you would get in Australia but I realise that in other parts of the world this would be a good representation of the colour of sand that you get. So next time I think I would mix a touch of white in with this just to lighten it a little bit just so that it's more in keeping with the colour of the sand that you get here because the sand that we get is quite white so that, that would be my only thing is that for me the colour of the sand is perhaps just a little bit too dark but like I say it can be fixed. So the next colour I poured was the aquamarine and I'm leaving quite a bit of a gap between just so that they're not running into each other just now just before I actually go and move it around on the board. Now this board is a nine, well 90 centimeter by 50 centimeters. So it is quite a, a reasonable size board. Now just using my hands I'm now moving this resin to fill the board. Now at this stage I'm not worrying about having the resin quite um, thick on there because I'm just moving it round to fill the board and just to see what I need to be working on next. Now because it was quite thick it actually was a little bit more difficult to move to the edges. 
and so what I decided I was going to do was just wait for it to cure for about 10 minutes or so on the board because it was actually quite a cure and quite fast at this time I was going to wait 10 minutes for it to cure and then I was going to use my fingers to ripple the, the resin a little bit now this has been left for about 10 minutes and as you can see here the resin is quite thick and it's not moving a great deal so all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to dapple my fingers or dabble my fingers through the resin just to create a little bit of movement in it because not a lot's happening with it at the moment so if I'd been using metallic pigments you would have seen a lot more waves and things happening um, without having to do a lot a lot of work with it so this is quite a bit of a challenge for me because this is not I've not used this kind of colour on my ocean waves and things before so as you can see I'm just moving my fingers around and just creating some ripples in the ocean area of the resin now this will flatten itself a bit as well but it's just I'm just mixing it just ever so slightly and just giving it a little bit of movement So once I'm happy with that and I've cleaned my gloves up, it's now time to move on to the next phase where I'm now going to apply some clear resin on top of these colours and then apply the white. Now the base colour is not fully cured. I often get asked if I wait for that to cure. No, I don't. Um, the reason for this is when I put this clear on now, it, the clear will start levelling. And it'll actually lighten some of the other colours up so it'll give another ripple effect in the, the water as well. So once I've applied the clear it's now time to apply the white. And like I mentioned I wasn't able to use the counterculture white, epoxy white, so I'm using the res angel white on this just because I know that I can create waves and lacing with this particular white although I'd never used it before in this particular resin I've just realized that I didn't plug my microphone into my computer so the sound will probably sound a little bit different so hopefully it doesn't distract too much so what I'm doing here, because I'm, I'm actually using the heat gun to try and blow the the white resin around, and as this resin is uh, is a, is quite thick, it's not moving quite as easily as I'm used to. So I'm having to use quite a bit of heat to get this to flow and move. So I decided at this point to add a little bit of the mineral turpentine. Now I've used mineral turpentine in the past when um, creating cells and lacing. So I add this to all the white areas to try and help break this the resin up a little bit. And I go through all of these and just add that to it. However, it didn't really make any difference on this occasion. So when you're trying to use mineral turpentine and the white with your resin it's it it's simply down to experimentation and what works for you so that's something that it's good for me to try this other resin because then I can see some of the challenges that you guys have been having with trying to get cells and lacing happening with your brand of resin and with your pigments and pastes so again I've gone back to using the heat gun to try and dis disperse this and as you can see it's not moving very easily so I do have to use quite a bit of heat and hover over a lot longer than I would normally. So I do run the risk of burning the resin here so just be mindful of that. So if you start seeing your resin smoke a little bit then it's time to move the heat away and let that cool down a little bit. Now, as always, I always wear a respirator when I'm working with resin and pigments. Even if it says 
on the resin that you know you can it, it's low odor it's low VOCs everything like that the minute you start applying heat or pigments or anything like that to the resin you're changing the composition of it which in turn means that you're breathing in other fumes plus the fact of added mineral turpentine to this which obviously has its own issues as well so always wear a respirator um, gloves and everything else that you need to protect yourself from the fumes of the resin. Now I might add that I found this particular resin to be quite fumey in comparison to my resin that I use and as I, ha I do have lung issues, uh, a lung condition, I do have to be very very careful around resins and other fragrances and chemicals so I'm mindful of the fact that even though I've got a respirator on I can still smell the fumes on here now it's it's quite strong and so for someone that's looking for something with, with low, low odor then this perhaps isn't the right brand of resin for you however if you're um you know happy to use you know this brand of resin and and you know like I say no matter what resin you use you should always wear a respirator but just bear this in mind that this is quite a fumey resin now it is a really really nice thick resin so now that the I've managed to move the white around I'm actually finding that the it's starting to create some really lovely cells in this and I think because it is a little bit thicker so even though I've had to work a little bit harder to achieve this you can still achieve it with the, the thicker resins now here I'm just adding some more clear to the sand because I felt that it could do with a little bit more moving into the sand area a little bit more of the white I should say so I've just added a little bit of clear and I'm going to do the same thing just add a touch of white and then using the heat gun move that round a little bit to break it up to create the surf so in summary I actually found this quite a nice resin to work with I did have I did struggle a little bit with it being a bit thicker but that's because I'm not used to it using a thick resin but I found that once I worked with it and manipulated it as much as possible that I did actually start getting the effects that I wanted on a plus side the the cells and lacing that I was getting from the white were much larger than I was getting with the the thinner resin that I usually use so that's definitely a plus the downside for me was it's just a little bit too fumey for my liking and and obviously this is not a resin I would normally use because it's not something that I would try to import into Australia because the logistics of that is just too difficult so you know so hopefully for people in the US and other countries that can get access to this that this video actually helps with your decision on using it the colors themselves I thought the colors were beautiful and very highly pigmented and I'm looking forward to creating some resin bowls to complement this piece because I think that they'll work really really well not sure how the white's going to react because I'm not going to be able to use a lot of heat on the bowl so we'll just see how that goes in the next video but on the whole I did enjoy this particular resin and so I think that it's a nice resin to work with as always you'll find a list of the products used in the description below also if you're brand new to resin and don't know where to start I've created a book the essential beginners guide to resin art techniques I will leave a link for the description in the bottom below also if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up or better still subscribe to my channel. So until next time, bye for now.